here and in this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own Valentine's puzzle using your own tech laser. I will also be showing you how you can customize your puzzle online, how you can also edit your photos, and again a lot of this is trial and error so you're going to probably have to use your judgment for this. If you're curious about some of the settings, you can actually download the library from the Ohm Tech Facebook group, so make sure to check that out if you're new and starting out. I do want to mention that I am going to be using Photoshop to do some slight adjustments to the photo that will be used as the example in this project. And the photo itself was actually just taken with my iPhone, nothing super special. But I do want to mention it just because for people who are new and starting out, you know, you are going to probably want some type of photo editing software that will allow you to, you know, convert your photo into black and white and make some slight adjustments like contrast and brightness. And yeah, let's jump onto the computer and get started. I have my photo right here that I brought into Adobe Photoshop. And the first thing that I want to do is come over here and turn it into a black and white image. Now that I have it black and white, I'm going to come over here and start working on adjusting my brightness and contrast. And the reason that I want to adjust the brightness and contrast is because when I'm bringing this over into Lightburn, some of the settings that we're going to be using, you really want to differentiate between the dark and the light tones. And if we look here, we can see that the background is a little bit, it's kind of conflicting with the, the two people. I'm just gonna kind of like white it out. And again, it doesn't really need to be super fancy because I'm gonna just be blurring it just a little bit because I want the background to kind of make the two people pop. And then I'm gonna come over here and you can play around with what settings you like the most. I'm going to use soft light in this situation. And I'm going to also darken up the people because I really want them to stand out amongst the background. And again, I'm going to be following the same type of thing. I'm going to be coming over here, kind of playing around with settings, see which one I like because I want to have the most contrast that I can. And this is also all trial and error. You know, I'm pretty happy with this, but I think I'm going to go in and add a little bit of highlights. Just going to adjust my brush size. And then once I'm done with that, I'm actually going to bring it into Illustrator because I want to add a little bit of a border and some text. Now, I will note that um, when I was doing this, I completely forgot the apostrophe S. So for this purpose, because I already had this film, this is just what I'm going to move forward with. But the file that you actually get with this is all correct, so fear not. This is also going to my boyfriend's. I don't think he's really going to notice, but we'll see. And to get the text to pop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a white box behind it on both parts of the text. I'm just gonna slightly adjust it. And the next thing that I'm gonna do after I have that, to make sure that it's all centered, I'm actually gonna select the boxes and the border. I'm gonna come over here to Path Outline Stroke. It's actually gonna make the stroke vector. And then I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to merge it. And then I'm just going to delete the white box. Now for our text, I'm going to do a command O, which is going to outline it and turn it into a vector. And then I'm just copying and pasting it right into Lightburn. And for people who are using a different software, you can also export it as an SVG if you'd like. And once it comes into Lightburn, I am going to need to do some adjustments. As we can see, it looks a little funny, so I am going to, I'm going to delete some of these wonky little things. And for some reason, sometimes it adds a double layer over some of the characters, so I'm just going to go in and delete them. And the settings that I'm actually using, you can find right on the Ohm Tech Facebook group, but I am going to be doing some adjustments here. Now if you come over here to your shape properties, you can actually start playing around with this and making some adjustments for your photo. Now I've scoured the internet and found all these different videos and found 
kind of an area that I really like working with. So the settings that I'm going to be using is just, you know, what I found in my personal preferences to come out looking nice. So again, it's also trial and error. Every photo is going to be different, unfortunately. Um, you know, once you have like a, a set of settings that you really like, take note of it. The other thing I will also note is that the shape properties do not actually save into your library. So if you have an image that you really like, you know, definitely, you know, take a screenshot or take down the settings that you like. Now, if we come over here to look at our preview, it's going to look really, really dark. Now, I do want to note from my personal experience, I found that you really can't rely on that. The same with the little preview that you see on your laser. Unfortunately, I don't really know of an accurate way to, to display it. Other than, you know, you just kind of have to wait and see. And again, I'm open to suggestions if other users have any ideas. But as we can also see, that engrave time is pretty long. It's like an hour and a half, and this isn't a super big image. Now to get the puzzle, there's this awesome little website that you can go to, which I have right up here, and you can actually generate the size of the puzzle and the pieces and everything that you want. So I just come over here, I play around with settings, you know, I just want something kind of basic and simple. And once I have the puzzle that I like, I just download it as an SVG, bringing it into Lightburn and put it over my image. Also want to make sure that our settings are correct. We are going to want to make sure that it's set to line and that it's going to be the last thing that we'll be cutting. And of course, you can also import the SVG that comes with this that has everything for you. So it's already set up. If you don't feel like, you know, going through and making your own stuff, that's completely fine. And it's all correct. So awesome. You can also just lay this over your image that you have and you should be good to go. And I am going to be engraving this on unmasked maple. It is going to take about, I think, 50 minutes with the size that I went with. Here we go. Look at that. So there's some like charring. That's okay. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because I did actually try to do the same design masked and it came out really, really uh, muted. To clean this, I just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a cloth or a paper towel. Just kind of gently dab it. With some of these pieces, you can actually see it in some of the darker areas, it almost looks like the dark parts are crumbling. And even with the lowest setting that I have, it's a little bit concerning. Again, it's all trial and error, finding the right settings that work best for you, that work best for your machine. You don't know until you try. So, you know, don't be too afraid to jump on in. And once you have your pieces all cleaned up, I always like to try and assemble my puzzles just to make sure that, you know, I didn't break anything along the way and that they assemble correctly. But this is actually gonna be a gift for my boyfriend. So I'm just gonna be sticking it in a little box that I had on hand. And yeah, let's check out the final reveal. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. <gasps> Ooh, a puzzle. Did you make this with a laser? Yes. Ooh. Trying to figure out where we took this picture. I don't remember there being like ropes and stuff. By my laser. Oh, I see now. Okay. <laughs> 